Hello, everyone. I am Solomon Letterer of Blockmatics, and I'm going to do just a quick video, 10 minutes or so, uh, showing you some of the basics of SmartPy, which is a smart contract language for Tezos. Um, in fact, it's not really a, a new language, but rather it's a Python library. So if you are already uh, a Python coder, um, it will be really easy for you to pick this up. Uh, you just need to learn the new library, but obviously everything else syntactically is the same. Um, you can go to smartpy.io. You can get some information about the language that way. There are two really great Medium posts that um, really give you some good examples, a good intro, which is more or less what I'm going to be doing in this video. And um, let's see. It's developed by Smart Chain Arena. They're a group based in New York City. And what I really love what they did is not only did they make the language, but also a really fantastic online editor. So you have your, your uh, browser-based IDE where you can write the code, test the code, uh, deploy the code, all that good stuff. Um, so you can go over to smartpy.io slash demo. Actually, here I'm, you can use the dev version, which is a bit, little bit more updated, which will hopefully match better the version that you're actually looking at when you see this video. Um, so we're just going to dive in. Not going to really create a contract that is of any particular use, per se. It's just rather this video is just to show you some basics of um, Python, of SmartPy. So at the very first line, we're just importing the SmartPy library. And then we just have a class, which we're calling simple operations, at, which has an initialization function and a set function. In the initialization function on line five, we are creating a variable called stored value. This gets stored in our smart contract. And on line eight, we have our function where we can just update or set the, that, the, the value of that stored variable. Um, notice on line seven, we have this decorator sp.entrypoint, which defines uh, that this function is one that can be called from the outside world. And this is a way, an entry into your smart contract. Uh, it has two arguments in the function signature self, which refers to the, the an object of this smart contract itself and your parameters. There's a, a params where we can also specify the, the different parameters that we pass in. We can reference it using the dot operator. We'll just see that. We'll see that in a minute. As you can see over here, actually, on line 9, we have the params.op for that operand. OK, and then. Um, the other thing we have is we are defining a function here, which is going to be our test. So it's really cool that we can now actually write the test in this same window using the same syntax, you know, the same language as we're actually writing our smart contract. Line 16, there's a variable called HTML, which is really just a string that's going to store um, some HTML text that is actually going to be our smart contract converted into an, an HTML string. So line 19, we're creating an object of our simple operations smart contract. And then um, 22 and 23, we're just updating. We're setting that variable to 9 and then to 17 after that. So here's the cool part is we have, we have the ability to call .html, which will convert our my contract object into a nice, pretty HTML that we can print out. We would just call set output HTML and run this. And here we have the test selected too. So we have the, the test will run as well. Um, as you can see, it could, kind of we have two blocks. It gets printed twice because we are calling that HTML twice and then just appending them together. Of course, initially we have nine, then 17, and it prints out both the operand, the parameter that we're passing through, and then also that variable. So 
And we'll just do a couple of other math operations as well. So we can do one multiply where we can take our stored value and just multiply it by whatever the parameter is. We can do star equals, which is just shorthand for, if you haven't seen that before, that's really just start shorthand for doing something like this, or rather params, params dot op. So that's really what we want to do. And we can just write star equals for that. And here we'll call multiply. We'll pass with two, so that should give us a result of, well, did something wrong already. I wrote multiple, multiply. Let's run that. And we have result of 34. Similarly, we could do the same thing if we wanna have a, say a divide method. We'll call divide. And here we'll just have a forward slash and say we'll divide. Well, let's see what happens if we were to divide by zero. We can try that. We'll give us the division by zero error. Well, okay, we're multiplying by two and then try to pay more attention to what I'm actually typing here and what I'm doing. And then we're dividing by zero. And of course, division by zero. What we could do is in the function itself, there's we have the ability to sp.verify that we want our params.op to be larger than zero. Can run that. Um, of course, it fails that condition, so the rest of that function will not execute. Of course, if we change this to five, then we'll get a result of six because we are doing our 34 divided by five gives us six. The remainder is just uh, truncated. Um, we'll do another math op operation to show you how whatever you have available, well, maybe not whatever, but a lot of the uh, control structures that you have in Python, you have it in SmartPy as well, but you just need to use the library version of it do SP dot so that it's available in your smart contract. So we're going to do factorial. So we're just going to multiply all the numbers um, from whatever, from one until whatever the parameter is. So we're going to do SP dot four X in range. And we'll start from one through our parameter value, whatever that is. We have to do plus one, so we actually are including whatever the input is. And we can just do, well, actually we're gonna multiply by X. Now I do, we should reset, or we, we want a stored value to be at one. So we'll have this function we're going to reset stored value to one, and then it will compute the factorial of our input and, and set that to stored value. Um, I'll just put a colon here, and we'll call factorial over here. Let's do factorial of 11 run that and factory of 11 is 399 million now 39 million 916,000 um just before we close off i'll just show you that of course up here we can have some other data types as well so we can have something a boolean so let's just say we have a flag which is false we can also have a double array you know, maybe we'll just have a two by two array. Uh, let's say it's just, well, let's just say a three by three. Sorry, threw in those zeros. Um, you know, just running this, it will also print out 
every time we call HTML, it's going to add this into the HTML object that, that gets printed. So you can see it. So we, we get that three by three array with a flag of zero. If we wanted to reverse the flag, so we can say here, reverse flag. And we'll just have our function over here, just negate it. My formatting here isn't great. I need to learn. There are editor sh shortcuts that you can use. Um, if you go into the menu over here, there's a way to get to, um, well, I don't see it right now, but I get, yeah, here we are, sh shortcuts for the Mac. So, or Windows rather. Um, I'll be using those next time. So factorial, um, no, we're doing reverse flag and we'll take whatever our flag is. I'm really messing this one up. And we just do the tilde is the negation. So just like that. And that, and then you can see here in the last printout, the flag is true. Uh, okay, so that is really it in terms of um, just as giving you a little bit an insight into SmartPy. I think it's a really cool language. Really excited how this gets developed going forward. I'm going to do another video shortly on creating actually a smart contract that is a bit more useful, something that you want to put on a blockchain. Um, but until then, um, take care, stay tuned, and I'll see you back here for video two.